Hello and welcome to A Cat in the Garden. I'm here with Safi today. She sees some birds out the window, so she's probably going to leave me very shortly to go chirp at them. Yeah, I know you see the birds, but you can't get them. There's a window there. But it is time to talk about some houseplant favorites. Yeah, she sees the birds. She's gone. All right, bye Safi. We'll see you later. Before we do, I wanted to shout out this new sweater I got because I just got it on clearance and this is not normally something I would go for, but I had to because it's Green Bay Packers colors. It's not affiliated. Like I just got it from a normal clothing brand, but I think it works so well and it's super cozy and it's finally starting to feel like fall here in Texas. So I had to wear it today and show it off and give a little bit of a shout out because I'm so happy that I have something that can just show off that I love the Packers without being obnoxious. Cause I think some, sometimes the football related designs are more tailored toward men. If you're a female and you watch football, you'll know what I mean. So I just think, thought this was super cute, but more importantly, it's time to talk about some cool houseplants. And I picked out five good ones today. I am very happy with the five I picked out. I feel like, there's been a lot of growth happening this month with the house plants, and I wanted to highlight that. So first I'm gonna start off with a philodendron, and that is my gorgeous philodendron subhastatum. This plant is such a trooper. It has been through so much. It survived thrips that ravaged through my philodendrons and monsteras this summer. It survived all of that. It's been growing, it's been maturing. I mean, do y'all see how thick that stem is. I really am getting this plant closer and closer to being a mature philodendron. I'm so happy about it. It's got new growth happening. So I think pretty soon I will have to give it a pole extension. I'm thinking I'll maybe have to check it for a repot too. Cause I don't think the way that it is right now, it could handle having a pole extension. It would just be a little too top heavy already right now it wobbles a bit so i have to sort out the potting situation maybe get it out of a plastic pot and into terracotta or ceramic which is totally fine i think i would really like to change it up with this plant though it has been doing really well in this situation it is currently losing an older leaf but i'm not too mad about that it's literally the oldest leaf left on the plant and it's crazy to think that the stem got from this which is really thin to super thick and just getting more mature. Still has the red backs on the leaves, which I love. It's just all around one of my most underrated plants, I think. I love having it in my collection. I love how easygoing it is. It's just a delight to look at. I know it's somewhat unassuming, but I really like plants that are unassuming in that way. It just has a little bit of elevation versus a green arubescence with the red backs. And it's just a very reliable, dependable plant that no matter what happens to it, it's just gonna make me happy. So I had to put it on this list. I also wanted to shout out the fact that it is attaching itself to the moss pole at this point. I've not had to use any plant Velcro in a while. So I am very happy with that as well. And hopefully by the next time I put this on a houseplant, houseplant favorites list, it'll be on a pole extension. That's my goal for it. So hopefully we'll see it again soon. Next up is a Hoya, of course, and that is going to be my Hoya Regina Folia, which is going on a crazy growth spurt right now. I was not expecting it to just be shooting out new growth points. I have a new vine right here, and then there's one in the back that's just popping up. It doesn't have any leaves yet. It's very new, but this plant also has been really steady, really reliable. It has never died back for me at all. I've owned it for quite a while. I've never repotted it, but I don't even think it needs to be repotted. I got it from Wild Roots Nursery. I want to say early this year, if not late last year. So I probably had it around nine months. I want to say maybe nine to 12 months and it has grown quite a bit. I mean, roots wise, it's not ready for a repot yet. I think I showed it off in a video earlier this month. And I do agree with one of the comments I got in that video that it needs a lighter pot. 
I think a lighter pot would accentuate the dark foliage better because it does have really nice dark green foliage and it gets lost with this black pot. So when I do repot it, I will be giving it a new decorative pot. I just think it's gonna look a lot better with that. But with that being said, it's really cool for a Hoya. The leaves are very narrow, but they are thick and waxy. They have really good texture, if it'll show up. Really good texture and veining on them. Light bits of splash, nothing too crazy on this plant. And the new leaves especially have been coming out really dark, which I do like. I just think it is another one of those understated plants that people don't talk about a lot, but I really enjoyed having it in my collection. I feel like we don't talk about common plants like Epipremnum enough, so I wanted to highlight one today. This is my Glacier Pothos. I do recognize I need to get it in a different pot. There are so many roots swirling around the bottom here. So it does need a repot. It has a little bit of sunburn just from being exposed to the light in the cabinet. I do have it pretty far away from a light, but it still is pretty sensitive in the areas that are variegated, especially. Other than that, it is a really stable grower. It is starting to lose some size in the leaves on the bottom, but I do have a couple of different actively growing points. There's one up here. All the leaves at the top look really full, really nice. I love the shape of the leaves on this plant. I do love the variegation pattern, especially on the leaves up here. I am debating about whether or not I should prop it, make a fuller plant, maybe put it on a pole. That I do want some trailing plants in my life. I know I've really been on a kick of trellising and putting plants on poles, but I feel like a few trailing plants isn't ever gonna hurt. And obviously I can just keep chopping if it starts putting out runners. I have a trailing golden pothos. It's an heirloom one out on my front porch that does so well. It's crazy that this plant withstands direct sun in Texas for about six hours of the day. Granted, it is mostly in the morning, but the fact that, I mean, it, it, very high variegation, a little bit of sunburn, but it grows really, really well. Like these plants are bulletproof. They can withstand so, so much. And we're not talking about epipremnum enough. So I, there, I have some decisions to make about this plant in particular, but I really love how full it is. I really love how reliable it is. And I just, I love it. I love pothos. I I kind of want to go out and buy a pothos now after looking at this because they are just such cool plants. I am at the stage in my plant growth journey where I cannot do one of these videos without having an anthurium because I love them so, so much. So here's the anthurium I chose. I know it's been on this houseplant favorite series a lot, but I love it. And it's just, it's growing so quickly for me now. And it's sizing up really quickly so i think it has to be on here and this is going to be my bessier affinity cross with magnificum it's my only plant from equigenera i got it in person in may of 2023 the end of may and it's i mean i guess it's been a year and a half and it's only grown like five leaves for me but it, lately it's been growing quickly so this is the newest leaf on it, the last leaf that came out. It just had a little rip in it, but other than that, than that, it looks amazing. I really am loving how this plant is turning out to mature. And I do have a brand new leaf incoming. I'm very excited. This one crept up on me. This plant, this leaf is barely hardened off and I have a new one. Obviously the oldest leaf is browning quite a bit but I don't mind because truthfully, that's the oldest leaf. This is the second oldest leaf. These two still look pretty good and I am growing these in low humidity. So this is going to happen eventually. I have been really keeping up with water and fertilizer on this plant. And I do think that is the main reason why it has been growing faster. It looks really good. I just love it. I appreciate that this pot does not match. It does not match the plant at all. It's just the only pot that perfectly fits the clear pot that it's in. And in the year and a half that I've had it, I have not had to repot it once. It is actually in soil. And I have not repotted it because it was, it was in way too large of a pot when I first bought it. So I wanted to just let it settle in and just establish 
establish itself in that pot, which it has done. It's looking so good. I'm so happy with this plant. I mean, it's, this leaf is huge next to my head. It's so big. So I'm very happy. This is one of my favorite anthurium in my collection. I'm just really happy with it. And I'm happy that a lot of my anthurium are turning into big boys now. I don't just have really tiny seedling anthurium or like four inch pot anthurium. I actually have decent sizes on these plants and it's just very cool to me because this was a major goal for my collection for years and when I lived in Maryland I was way too scared to own one but in Texas I finally took the leap a couple years ago and I really think it's paying off and they're not as scary as I thought they would be. Before I move on to the fifth and final plant for the month of October, I wanted to give y'all an update on a plant from last month that was about to unfurl a new leaf and I was really hopeful that it would have good variegation on it. And I'm here to report that it does. I dropped the perlite again. I did that last month. I literally did that in last month's video, but it's okay. This is the new leaf on my third Monstera Albo. It looks great. I'm loving the half moon look. The marbled variegation is wonderful because the leaf before that was this one. But I was like, I'm not going to be worried. The stem variegation is great. It's going to be okay. And it was. I'm so happy with this plant. It is currently hardening off. It's still not quite hardened off. The size difference, I mean, it's about the same size, but I have yet to put it on a pole, but I'm really happy to report that the variegation is great. It's not reverting at all. And I'm just super happy with it. Finally, I have the plant I am most excited about and it's gonna be like last month. It's a Hoya that's blooming. I just, I have had so many Hoya blooms this year. I think I'm gonna do like a little short at the end of the year showing off all my Hoya blooms because I have never, had this many Hoyas bloom my entire time collecting plants. I bought my first houseplant in 2019, so it's been quite a while. And just to have such a wide variety of different blooms is really cool. This was something that I didn't even think was attainable. Just like Anthurium, I was scared of Hoya at first, and I don't know why. They're so easy and they're so much fun, and being able to get so many to bloom has been really rewarding for me. I just love it. I think I love flowers and it's really inspired me to grow more flowers in my outdoor garden as well. But if you haven't seen it already on my socials, my Hoya Numelarioides is blooming like crazy. And if you want a Hoya, oh my gosh, I can just, I can smell it from here. It's so good. If you want a Hoya that is going to bloom for you reliably every single year, no matter what size it is, please do yourself a favor and get a Hoya Numelarioides. This is just gonna be like a, an ad, a PSA for this plant because I cannot recommend this plant enough. It is such a wonderful, unique Hoya. It's very fuzzy, but the stems are super woody. Even when it's actively growing, they have very thick stems on this Hoya. They're fuzzy, but not too fuzzy very thick leaves. They're rounded with a little point on the end. So cute. I just, I loved it as a plant before I even knew what the blooms were like or that it bloomed so much. But the blooms are, these are some older ones. It has a bunch ready to open. They are very cute, very small with the red center and they smell like cinnamon sugar to me, like a spiced sugar. They're so sweet. I think they're perfect for fall. It only blooms fall to winter. I can get some just because we have mild winters here. I can get some blooms to extend out into winter, but I know fall weather is coming when this plant blooms and it, it just releases so many peduncles from everywhere. I have them all over this plant, many that are just now emerging as well. I have really tiny peduncles coming out here and I hardly ever, I don't think I've ever had it just blast the blooms before they open. Like this plant will bloom no matter what. I had, when I first had this plant, I actually underwatered it a lot and almost killed it and it still was blooming for me. It is so hardy, it is so tough. 
and it just smells so good. Nutmeg actually loves the smell of this one. This was the first Hoya Bloom I ever had him smell and it kind of kicked off like me just showing him every single Hoya that blooms and he loves it. He loves smelling flowers even outside. It's just really a key thing that he does. But this plant, I cannot, I cannot say enough good things about it. And of course I have it in just a silly little plastic cup on a windowsill. So it's got like algae growing in it and it's doing great. It's living its best life. It's been actively growing all summer. There's a bunch of new leaves up here, new leaves here, a lot of new growth over here. And it's blooming like crazy. I mean, what more can I say about this plant? It's just so wonderful. The tiny little clusters of blooms. Oh, it's focusing right there too. That is, that could be a thumbnail. That's so good. It is a wonderful plant. I cannot, if, if I have one Hoya in my collection, it's probably this one. I just cannot, I cannot say enough good things about it. I love the little nectar that comes out of the blooms. I just love how they look. They're actually really fuzzy. It is hard to pick up on a camera unless I have like a macro lens or the new kind of macro lens on the iPhone cameras. I didn't even realize how fuzzy they were until I was able to get a good shot of them, but they are really fuzzy. Just they match the plant so well. And I think it's really cool that this plant only blooms in the fall. A lot of my Hoyas bloom in the spring and summer. I feel like most do, but this one just happens to be a fall bloomer and I love it. If the smell matches fall, I feel like the foliage almost kind of matches fall. The blooms match fall, the smell matches fall. It's just such a wonderful plant. And it was right on point with its timing too. A week after I saw the peduncles emerging, we got fall weather. So this plant, I don't know, it, it has a sixth sense. It has a sixth sense about the weather and I just, I can't get enough. I could rant about this plant all day, but I won't. <laughs> I will spare y'all from that. I will probably show it to my husband and all the cats like every single day, but it's so wonderful. And it, it just had to be on this list because it is such a fun plant. And I love that you can just see all the different bloom clusters all over it, just from every angle. It's so much fun. So that's it for our five favorite plants for the month of October. We are really in the thick of fall now and I'm gonna blink and it's gonna be Christmas and then it's gonna be New Year's and it's gonna be 2025. And that's just crazy to think about. Saffron decided instead of watching the birds, she was actually gonna go try to play fight with her sister who is not having it because Luna is an old girl who does not tolerate when the children, Safi and Nutmeg, try to play with her. But it was really cute. They were, they were nice about it at least. But if you like this video, make sure to give Saffron and I here a thumbs up down below and subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.